other part of this the same text explains this. In 1524-ish, uh, part of the town here in East Becky had left. Maybe due to diseases, uh, maybe because of general fear that was you know, going through New Spain at the time because Tenochtitlan had fell, Mexico City had fell. You know, there was, it was an unsecure, unsecured, unsecured time. Right? So a group had left from here and moved further up into the mountains. Further up into the mountains, that way. Founded this town, Yavago, right? And they lived there. In 1576, um, Istepechi was abandoned and moved to New Istepechi, the town that we saw down there. And so they abandoned this place. Now, in Yavago, there was this, these diseases. So they decided to abandon the town of Yavago. And where did they go? They went back to where they came from. Right? 50 years before, they had uh, abandoned this place here, and then moved there, and now they came back. On their way, they met other people. Probably other people who were also, uh, you know, moving away from their place because there were diseases there too. Normally they're the regional diseases. So they met other people, apparently in Atapec, according to this document, moved here and founded a new town. But at this time, Istepechi was abandoned, right? Because they had moved it down the hill. So they moved here and founded the new town and they called it San Pedro Istepechi. That one is Santa Catarina Istepechi. Right? So they found this new town. As they did this, right here, they found a new town. The lineage from East Bay, New East Bay, this is the new town down there. They said, wait, great that you move there. You have the right because you know you're you're our same people. You're the same people as in Puya. But these lands here are ours. And it so happens that these lands here down the hill are the most fertile lands of the whole of Eastern Bay. That's why they're of the lineage. Right? So, um, in 1576, probably this man here, or maybe this, but probably this man here, was the ruler of Eastern Bay. I mean, he is of July, 1520, probably lived another 20 years, 1530, 1540, whatever. And then this is his son, 1560, 1570, he was alive, right? So he was the man who claimed the right of his lands against some bit, right? He made his document up to here. These people were not there, okay? He made his document. Which is probably this document that was described by the people. They say it was in leather, right? This may have been the original document. We don't know. This is no, no longer existing. You know? Now, in, 15, in 1691, Don Domingo and his brother Don Diego, now caciques of this land, right, of, the, of this town, they were powerful here. They needed to make a document to be recognized. So what did they do? They took this document, copied it, and added their genealogy. <laughs> and we have a lot of reason to believe that this he, Don Domingo and Don Diego, were not true descendants of this man. Right? But he added them. That was before I this possibility that we didn't exist. Right? So what we're seeing is a copy reworked for reasons in 1691, claiming these lands. Right? If he could prove, or they could prove, that they were descendants, then they could claim these lands. So it was worth it making a new document. <laughs> Right? And later on, these texts were added. 
These texts, this long text in Zapotec, describing all the border places of East Africa, like we saw in the country of Zabashi, right? So they just write them down. They don't uh, put them in here, they just write them down. And these here, these are uh, the border places that define the border between San Pedro de Chizo and East Africa. That would also add them. So these are later editions of the document. Right? Like these ones, right? When they were used. So that's the whole document. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have a close look if you want. Yeah, sure. It's a it's a it's a